Welcome to episode three of No BSTS. And in this one, we're going to look at functions that take functions or create functions. Now, this is our video series where we do small five to 15 minute videos on TypeScript. No BS, and you can learn at your own speed. It's free. Let's jump right into it. Picking up where we left off, we've got our functions.ts, but I'm really not going to use that one here. We'll make a new one called funks and funks.ts. And so let's say you make a function and you want it to support a callback. So in this case, for example, you want a print to file function. That takes some text and then also takes a callback. And it doesn't return anything, so it'll do a void. So now we want to go and print out that text. And now we want to call that callback. So how do we define that? Well, let's see if command K, command I gives us any hinting there. Nope, it doesn't. It just says it's any. So what we can do is we can use the colon and then we do what looks like a function, but is in turn actually a type specification. So you give it the open and close parens, and then you give it the return type. If you want to have some additional values in there, you could just put like, for example, V is a number, and then we'd take a number. So you can pretty much define it just as you would any other function. And let's try that. Let's create an array mutation function that takes an array of numbers. And then it's going to take a function that is given each number and returns a new number. So for example, call mutate, it's going to be a function. It's going to take a number and it's going to return a number. And this function is going to return a set of numbers on its own. And now how do we do this? Well, honestly, this is just map. So let's just do numbers.map and then give it that mutate function. All right, let's give it a try here, console.log. We'll give it our array mutate. We'll give it an array of one, two, and three. And let's see, so it's automatically hinting us that we need a function here and that function takes a number and it returns a number. So let's do that. And let's just multiply it by 10. Okay, let's run it in console log. Again, we'll use TS node and we're calling this one funks and funks. And there you go. One, two, three becomes 10, 20, 30. Change that 20 there. Run it again. 10, 230, excellent. Cool. But this is a little bit hard to read at least for me. So I'm going to define this as a type. Now, anything that is after that colon is a potential type specification that you can share with other things. So I'm going to grab this, copy it, and then create a new one called type mutation function. And then in this case, unlike interface, you have to use equals and then paste that. And there you go. Now copy that and paste that in there. And I think that just reads a little nicer. Now you can also, if you like, you can export this mutation function as well. And that way when somebody's creating a function, let's go here and create a potential mutation function. So my new mutate function, and it'll just give it the type of mutation function. And it doesn't qualify yet because I haven't implemented it. So let's go over here and we're gonna say, we want a value and that value is a string and then it's gonna return a string and there you go. And it's like, wait a second, hold up. That's not right because the type of an, a, a function that return, takes a string and returns a string is not assignable to a type mutation function. All right which is very true. So this needs to be a number, which is still not right because now we're exporting a, a string. And now we'll do times 100 or whatever we want in there. And now we're fine. My new mutation function qualifies as a mutation function as defined by this type.
Okay, so how about functions that return functions? So let's make a classic JavaScript closure. Call it create adder. And it's going to take a number. And it's going to return a new function, which takes a number. And then as the original number, or captured number in this case, to the number that's being brought in. And so how do you use a function like this? Well, I'm going to say add one, for example, is going to be create adder with one. And then any time that I console log add one plus some new number, say 55, and then I run that. Let's just bring that up so we can see it. Now we're going to get 56 because we've captured this one there and add one is a new function that will go and add one to any value that comes in. It's really pretty cool. That's basically the basic mechanics of JavaScript and TypeScript closures. Okay, but now how do we define the output type of this? So let's do command K, command I, our old friend. And hey, nice. It's actually showing us the complete thing here, the complete definition. So let's go copy and paste that. And there you go. But if that again kind of reads a little funky, uh, we can actually again go and copy that. And actually look, it's the same exact thing as mutation function. I'll just make a new one. Let's see, call it uh, an adder function or something like that. Adder function. And there we go. Nice. Excellent. Okay, cool. Now it really is worth getting to be familiar with functions that take functions and functions that return functions, particularly because there's such a big hype around functional programming when it comes to JavaScript, TypeScript, everything else. A lot of our frameworks use functions, calling functions, calling functions, returning functions, and a lot of that. So being familiar with this syntax is really important. And as we get into generics, it'll be even more important. Of course, in the meantime, feel free to like and share this video with your friends. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Click on that bell and you'll be notified anytime a new one of these videos comes out.